what is going on guys what is going on how's everybody doing how's everybody doing anyway it's been a while with me on instagram it's been a very long time i came out here to break things down change perspectives educate that's like that's like my goal out here you know once in a while then i just get some people force me out of the box because i've just been out here in my own zone just chilling enjoying my vibe but you get random people just throwing jabs left and right and when i come across them and then i feel kind of bored and have the time i give them a piece of what they need to know and then it becomes more like a banter but nonetheless like it's far from that right it's far from me giving any form of attention it's just like when i become bored and then i find your dm irritating or perhaps illogical for lack of better words then i just tend to use you as the means of releasing my boredomness <laughs> So for all the guys that keep jumping into my DMs randomly, don't entirely stop. Once in a while, it helps my psychology ease off. <laughs> anyway, let's come to the main reason why I came on this live. I pretty much hope and expect that the two guys that had back and forth for lack of better words, exchange with me for their conceptualized system of trading, which is more to say they call the SMC. So I had a lot of people asking me, could you, what is the meaning of SMC, All right? So SMC basically mean in quotes in quotes remember that a smart money concept right smc typically means smart money concept so these kind of people that subscribe to this ideology are saying that they are smart money because they are trading with the banks right so generally it's a it's a general knowledge you don't need to read any book watch any special youtube video to know the difference between smart money and dumb money right it is regarded that retail money is dumb money and then institutional money is smart money right in concept let me break that down so basically why we would say retail money is dumb money and then institutional money smart money is typically because on the short term institutional money is able to drive price directions where they want it to be or where they want it to go whether on the upside or on the downside nonetheless retail money may never push market anywhere right but let me break it down we're still we're still understanding the concept why would retail money not not push the market anywhere because on a regular each individual retail trader has little or very less significant financial stake in the market as compared to just a single institution on its own right otherwise even if all retail traders put their money together they can push the market but to face the reality not all retail traders will decide to trade in one market at the same time or one particular direction of the market other than that perhaps what we call retail 
money being that money could have perhaps also been a somewhat money right so if you take a bank like maybe ubs or goldman sachs or whatever it is they have millions and trillions of dollars to push price in the short term wherever they want it to go why because it is part of their aum asset under management so if their directive says that let's buy btc their directive says let's buy tesla their directive says let's go short on gold their directive says let's go long on oil they're going to be pushing millions and billions of funds towards that particular asset class nonetheless if kojo forex who has perhaps maybe 17,000 or 16,000 members in his community says gbp usd sell joe trader who may also be in his community with 16 17,000 followers who does it be seeing something different than say gbp usd buy so at the same time it only means that on a retail level we are all we are just conflicting our own interest right <laughs> because retail side everybody's expressing their own opinion but on the larger scale right which is institutional level for the most part they move price in proportion to where the overall directional market would would necessarily be going what does this also mean does it also mean that at the, at the institutional level they are not in competition with themselves that's wrong at the institutional level they are in massive 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 competition with themselves but but with evolution with evolution they realized that nonetheless it wasn't necessary to be in competition with themselves they said who is not that's my girlfriend she's not really snoring she's just relaxing she's tired after work right so i'm saying that <coughs> what i'm saying is that at the institutional level the banks they are in massive competition with themselves at a retail level, we can't even be in competition with ourselves because why are you going to compete with, 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 with which money, right? Now listen to the next one. Prior to retail traders being invited onto this game of derivatives trading, right, where we have our own money to stick on the market and just make some pips out of the market, right? Do you, do you even realize that for the most part, most retail orders do not even go through the market itself right retail volumes right especially for traders that are dealing with um they are, that are dealing with um, um um unregulated brokers right you know this, you it's like a, um a bucket shop right do you know what a bucket shop is a bucket shop is brokers that are taking the other side of your position if you go sell they're going to go buy if you go buy, they're going to go sell because they know that for the most part, 90% of retail traders lose their money. At the same time, if they are taking 90% of the other side, it means that they're going to make 90% profit and then perhaps be losing 10% of the time, right? If this is so deep for you to understand, I have no better way to break it down. Perhaps just because most of you claim to know it all. So maybe we just have to be going extremely technical without even breaking things down into the little bit for the ordinary person to understand or or taking in our get from right so i'm saying that prior to retail involvement in the market prior to retail involvement in the market big institution used to used to battle amongst themselves right Big institutions used to battle among themselves until a latter part of, let's say, probably between um, 1993, 94, 95, there about, where retail money got invited onto the, the world of trading. How did retail money get invited onto the world of trading? Retail money got invited with the evolution of personal computers and then internet, right? With the evolution of personal computers and internet, the financial market became creative, right? As with every industry, creativity is what helps a particular industry grow, right? You can be a musician without trying to be creative, right? Back in the days, we used to have high life. Now we have what? 
all these Americans and singing blah 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 you know it's creativity in the industry we can't just say we highlight forever so in the financial market we can just have computers and internet and still leave the creativity of the market just to big players to just only be dwelling in the market right there there came what the brokers right remember that brokers are individual businessmen we have a lot to discuss this is just the beginning brokers are individual businessmen that that are that are in the market for their sole interest, right? What is their sole interest? It could be in two forms. To just be like an agent in between the market makers or the big players, which is the liquidity providers, who are also the same as the big banks and the retail side, which is you and I, or anybody in his bedroom trading the market, right? So that, that alone bullshits anybody that calls himself smart money you sitting in your bedroom or on your mobile phone or on your laptop just because somebody taught you some one candle identification that allows you perhaps to risk five people say i'm the smart money i'm trading like the bank that is bullshit have you heard of hfc or hfx or whatever they call it these days right some people misconceptualize it for um binary trading right which they call high frequency trading high frequency is not like even binary but let me not deviate from my topic because if i want to go on to hfx or high frequency we may even start talking about a whole different thing altogether in this market now <laughs> now like i'm saying big institution realize that they have an invite on the table right and then these invites on the table have less knowledge of what is literally going on in the market so rather than now competing among themselves and then just throwing jobs and big money amongst themselves they just more like laced among themselves right which is not supposed to be so right lays among themselves and then in quotes <laughs> being regarded as a smart money because they can literally push market in the interim to wherever they want to, right? And then now the dumb money, which is individual traders with $500 account, $1,000, 500000 20000 whatever it is, who can literally not push market in, in a slider of pips, right? On one side as a dumb money. So they'd literally trick us into positions where we feel like yes this is where the market is going right and in quotes sort of like um for lack of better words people would say manipulate or take us out and then drive market into the right direction so taking us out what does it mean it literally means that bringing our money back onto their coffers or on their table right you understand what i mean do you realize that for the most part, big players do not even trade the market with stop loss, right? Sometimes people think that big players trade the market with stop loss. They put five pips in the market, 10 pips in the market. Bro, don't lie to yourself. These things are tools, tools for retail traders. Big players do not even trade with MT4. What is MT4? MT4 is just like uh, a synthesized a synthetic platform more to to emulate what big institutions trade with right but that is far from what for as far fetched from what big corporations use in trading so we don't think that they also press the same thing we have here with the buy one lot sell one lot and stuff like that right <coughs> now now back to the screens itself right back to the screens itself so you must understand that with what i've said from the beginning to this point right with what i've said from beginning to to the to this point of the video it means that there can be basically so many variations to how anybody wants to interpret the market right and then Number two, you can only claim, right, in quote, claim that you're trading with the 
smart money or big money or whatever it is based on some technical concept that kind of makes sense to you you understand me? back in the days for anybody that used to trade with chart patterns they may say yes they are trading with the big banks because they're using what, the chart patterns and blah 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 right and then it was a new thing to the whole society again when let's say japanese candlestick got introduced to the westerners they may think that yeah this is probably the way the big banks used to trade that's why they were making money than us right and then um let's say um the the netherlands right and then the belgians who who even introduced um the uh, dynamic support and resistance right do you know what dynamic support and resistance are the moving averages right the 200 the 50 the 100 the 14 right they may have also felt that this was just the key player to or perhaps the game changer in the market for them the same thing has been what has evolved onto the onto today or we have a lot of people calling wyckoff theorems and then uh, these uh, so-called or for lack of better words again respectfully other blogs <coughs> institutional candles uh sponsored candles whatever it is concept revolving around the internet and everyone youtube these days right everything comes and goes nonetheless do not forget that none of them can explicitly can explicitly <coughs> or conclusively denote the way big institutions trade right I think sometime back last year, probably around the same time, I showed you guys or did a thorough breakdown of how big institutions actually trade. And I showed you on a video, video that perhaps if I if I had not brought it up, most of you would have never, ever, ever come across such a video, even on YouTube, regardless of how YouTube keeps recommending videos, because that video was as far back as 1980 something, right? And that typically stipulates exactly how big banks trade, right? For the most part, they are even for in for the short short movement, right? Hardly going for the long haul, right? So every institutions have got their own objectives, right? Do not think that they all think the same way, right? The way George Soros focuses on his Soros fund management or quantum fund management would want to approach the market is typically different from the way somebody who's uh, a star trader in Barclays Bank would be approaching the market the same way, the same way, the way somebody who's also a star trader in UBS would be approaching the market. If indeed these people are smart money or perhaps they know it all, why would we have, for lack of better example, Kweku Adoboli, who's from Ghana, blow UBS's over two billion pounds or dollars or whatever the exact amount is. If they are the smart money and then know it all, right? Do you know what he was doing? He was basically averaging his losses, right? Market goes down, he buy, go down, he buy. Why was he doing that? Because for the most part, they have deep pockets that can, in the short term, bring the market back to whatever degree of retracement it goes to. They have all the time to hold it. You mm -hmm. understand me? And if the market comes back up, imagine going um, um doubling down on millions and millions and millions even if it comes half your drawdown you're going to be in massive profit that's all they need right they do not need to make 100 percent, 200 percent like some of us greedy retail traders want to make big institutions are impressed with 15 percent return per annum 20 percent you are above average 30 percent then you're blowing you're literally blowing their mind you understand me so for you to be able to find concepts that allows you to risk five percent ten percent it is pretty much ingenious it is pretty much insightful it is pretty much what everybody would want to do but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are trading like the banks do you understand me now why i even came up here is uh, for the most part people that say they are risking five pips ten pips and then they're going to catch 200 pips and stuff like that like the guy that i was having that exchange with do not even understand the implication of what they are really doing right 
so if you are really really here and then you treat smart money but or whatever concept it is like of risking two people one pip half a pip and then you do not apply the basic ideology or the basic the basic wisdom to it then you're you're pretty much wasting your time right then you're pretty much just just participating for a show off right now let me explain mathematically what i mean so if somebody says that yeah i trade smart money i'm able to risk uh one paper two pips and i cut 200 pips right it means quote unquote that person can flip like um let's say um a 500 dollars to like i said ten thousand dollars in a single day or, or or in two days or three days how is this possible all right how is this possible but you know the flaw here before i even go how this is possible you know the flaw <laughs> people that say yeah I'm, I'm using smart money concept i risk small people to this we still get them using basic and regular lot sizes that we that perhaps risk the 30 20 pips risk on the market which is the 0 0.5 the one lot you and i bro are no different <laughs> because if you if you are saying that you can risk two pips in the market right trust me risk to reward wise if you are supposed to use a risk calculator that adjusts for your lot size if two of us have let's say thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars and then let's say we want to risk one percent one percent means that if i lose i'm going to lose hundred dollars if you lose you're going to lose hundred dollars and let's say i'm setting stop loss in pips to be let's say um um, um 20 pips and then you are setting stop loss in pips to be uh, let's say if, uh, three pips or let's say five pips right if 20 pips allows me to take one lot your five pips will allow you to take like 10 lots it means that at 10 lots because you are using a, a smaller pip a stop loss if you lose you're still gonna lose your hundred dollars but me at 20 pips with one lot if the market reverses against my position at 20 pips that is where i am going to lose that hundred dollars so pips wise or reward wise it makes sense for you to get more money than me but why would you subscribe to such a concept and then you and i basically take the same lot size if we we're still giving the same account balance then it means that you are not applying your concept with wisdom right you're just possibly following the crowd because that's the order of the day everybody got to show that yeah they are sniper catching entries on the week and stuff like that right again i like to always say times it on numbers that i learned from various sources and i only not learn something or open my mind to something that really deviates from my core principle principles in the market which is just price action right there's sponsored candle institutional candle why call blah 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 it all categorizes under price action why because there's no external indicators on the market to point out when to buy and when to sell but by literally reading from price interaction on the market which is the candlesticks right so for any concept that revolves around this foundational blocks then it is something that you find me getting interested in in just being open-minded about how it can improve the basic things that I know, right? Which is like my psychological levels, my trend lines, my key levels, my fib levels, every other thing that somebody may regard as uh, perhaps this is basic or something like that, right? So over so many years, I've looked into these concept of risk and small using this and that and that and that and that and I kind of realized that at the end of the day any trader can choose to risk any amount of pips within any particular range in the market that they want to trade all that matters is that it should have a higher accuracy to your edge in terms of not having like a particular literally any drawdown that's going to affect that position perhaps then it comes back to the same thing you're going to literally keep losing your money 
right so i was invited to a forum and then the moderator who in quotes also trades smart money or whatever it is was literally saying in his platform that um he he got frustrated because two of his positions literally ran into stop losses right that's fair enough it's not to shame him that's honestly what happened that's why he's sharing it right but we live in a society where people want to promote elevate their concept whatever it is for whatever reason in the market and then makes you and i believe that if you subscribe to their knowledge and then you are now standing to risk that five pips in the market that 10 pips in the market that two pips you are not susceptible to making a loss on the market right trust me you may go several tons of ways into losing that one percent in three or four trades which at the end of the day makes up to five percent risk and then somebody would literally be risking two percent and still be making more money than you you understand me the difference is that if indeed you go according to what i have shared previously which is using that lot size in conjunction with exact stop loss and pips to follow that proper risk to reward and then being disciplined enough to hold your trace through then you may come out to be that profitable but i have never with all my experience with more with all my exposure with all my associations seen any smart money whatever whatever concept person show me that this is my thousand dollars or this is my two thousand dollars this market got to this point i said or not that because i'm risking five pips the risk reward allows me to put a lot size of 10 lots and then the marketing hit my stop loss so this 10 lot is currently running at so so and so pips i have never met any single one person like that right <laughs> anyway i think i've shared a lot right now with a guy that said that could you um if i say that i know much about smart money concept then i should come on live and then perhaps um teach right perhaps teach my knowledge right so i'm just gonna be doing a random back test right hopefully i find um he dead me so it's just a matter of so that you guys know that i'm not talking from an a very unbiased view but a very lit literally like a clear view right so um i might have to just zoom this thing in so that you guys understand what i mean i'm trying to find a certain example i'm still going to be using my four hour time frame regardless right because i believe that regardless of any time frame any concept should still make sense right so um if you have ever been on any the guy is here yeah let him learn if you have been on any kind of um any kind of uh or perhaps watch any kind of video on smart money blah 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 or sponsored candle institutional candle right people that subscribe to that ideology believe that as the market is moving from let's say point a here right to point b here right is the big players or institutions that is moving this market right but upon their journey of moving the market from let's say point a to point b right along the line they leave some others unattended unattended to that they are supposed to come back and they like to use the word mitigate those orders or perhaps they leave some price inefficiencies they that they are supposed to come and refill right so what do i mean by price inefficiencies and then uh, some orders unattended to right so those kind of concepts believe that for the market to be efficient 
there shouldn't be any price that is not traded within and then they believe that price that is not traded within can be identified by spacing out two wicks usually counting from three candles so for example if i zoom in this chart right if i zoom in this chart and then i i identify this as candle one candle two candle three you can see that we have something of this sort here right which allows here to even be regarded as what inefficient so they believe that at some point in time as this market is going up it would come back down to mitigate this inefficiency that is happening here right nonetheless they believe that a particular candle like this would be regarded as a sponsored candle or an order block or whatever it is that they like to term it as right why and how do they identify that they say that sponsored candle is usually the last candle before a violent push on the opposite direction in the market so let's say this market is going up then it start retracing the last candle before that violent continuation is regarded as the other block or the sponsored candle or the whatever whatever name that anybody wants to give it imbalance or whatever there's an imbalance imbalance is different from this so once the market comes back down and there's this range here which is that in quote sponsored candle which somebody else may also call double bottom which somebody else may also term as uh, perhaps uh, 78.6 78 retracement then they're supposed to get their entry there and then continue the market in the right direction now they can be able now this process is regarded as what well, that mitigation that is going on right so they can be able to <laughs> draw down into lower time frame and perhaps read the same zone here and now refine their entry and then stop loss within this range all right that range that i've denoted there it could go extra lower and then now put their stop loss somewhere like this right and expect to make a profit up high this high and then perhaps increase the risk to reward to 1 is to 20 1 is to whatever 1 is to whatever right now i'm just going to take some time to read some of y'all's comments as well man this bro don't know msc just logic and basic explanation also try refine it to m15 because i'm literally exposing <laughs> their mental strategies <laughs> people would always run up wisdom with jobs now you see let me run it up to the lower time frame right let me watch me do it right watch me do it now let's say this is our point of interest or zone or whatever it is right every guy that you see trading spawns uh, 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 smart money or whatever it is would always load up different time zones right do you know why they load up different time zones because they are going to tell you that price respects no time and time respect no blah 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 bullshit right now the defect of that logic is they're saying that if he has order block and then you want to refine you want to go into continuous different time zones to be able to find the same kind of candle that depicts the same wisdom and then regard that one as the other block you understand me so it means that at the end of the day it is subjective you understand me and it applies to the same concept that they used to derive um the same concept that they used to derive um um uh, the wyckoff schematics right right so now look at this the person saying that i should go to lower down and then and then derive it right i'm still going to be looking into the zones right
perhaps let me change this color all that matters right is literally starting from any time frame that you subscribe to whether the two hour the 45 minute the 30 minute right this one then you want to look for what the last candle right a bearish candle before a bullish candle that kind of signify what an other block would be right it is your own discretion at your own discretion to choose that right remember that this big zone is our zone of interest so any other one that fulfills that for you then it means that they regard that point as where the market is coming to mitigate that other block or whatever it is so what <laughs> you can literally still take a trade within this range right putting stop loss just beneath that range which allows this trade setup to be what three pips or whatever it is and then anticipate that last high up there to be reached so with a guy that said that i should go all the way to the one one minute time frame right what's his name again oblige or whatever it is all right do you want some more examples perhaps i'll teach you your concept even more it is your concept but perhaps i'll even school you more to it I told you to come online at 8 a.m. I said 8 a.m. 8 p.m. And I'm going to school you. And I'm just so glad that indeed <laughs> you came back. You came online to learn. Yes, is more to ICT than just the PDRA, guys. I don't think you should be doing this because it makes him look childish. What is PDRA in the first place? As well, if I should learn this concept, I'll use four pips, take out my calculator, and do mad one risk. <laughs> Beside your, your just what? For the people, for anybody that is saying that they are quote-unquote smc or whatever it is gurus right it's a simple thing out here right at the end of the day what matters is being able to put yourself out perhaps i'm even giving you the opportunity to popularize your your your, your school of thought right come on this live join me pull up your screen pull up your chart pull up the trade youtube show us a screenshot that yes in this trade i have an account balance of a thousand dollars because of this i was able to risk two pips and then it says that i should take 20 lot size or 10 lot size or whatever it is and i held that trade to this point and it made me this amount of money it's an open challenge to us all i don't trade that way i see my positions i find my confirmations i determine my risk pay my account balance then i know exactly how much pips i want to trade not literally pulling out okay i want to rest one pips because i want to put out this so it's an open challenge you should you should probably take this as a call of opportunity to popularize yourself i'm doing you free favors out here free literally free favors out here Request this live session. Show us your skills. Not just by word of mouth, but by proof. Blow us, blow our mind up. Show us not just your entry, because anybody at all can put their entry for testing out their concept on a demo. And then she was just like, you don't even need to show us if it is a real account or, or demo. Just show us the, the account, <laughs> the lot size that you put on that trade and then how it's increased with proportion to your... You always see them right on their screens. One, one is to 2,000, one is to 500, one is to this. Let it make sense to the ordinary person by, by figure, by monetary reasoning not by and then this guy say could you arrest one pip 
you literally put trading view markup and come and tell me i raised one pip bullshit total bullshit i've given you that public display of popularity just just do your magic and blow our mind off you can't come here and draw chats i said that is all you get to see from people that popularize that concept have you ever seen anything otherwise from what i'm saying tell me the truth for from the top guru to the bottom end they are all gonna be doing the same thing i said you don't even need to show us if it is a demo or a real account you understand me <laughs> somebody says please give another example it means that perhaps i'm even teaching this concept better than people that subscribe to it <laughs> you know if somebody wants to learn it from me it means that perhaps i'm even teaching it better than the two thousand pounds and then whatever fucking amount they pay for such thing I'm kind of giving you guys that time to prove yourself, though. That is why I'm doing this, right? Still giving some ample time for anybody. My request is still empty as of now. Nobody from all the people that were jabbing, the guy that said, I took six trade, risking one pip and two pips. I made, um, was it 200 pips on GBP NZD? I made 80 pips on this. I made 150 pips on this. He was able to show me just one trade. And now, because he started getting intimidated, he said, I made $1,000 this week. Bro, and I think that $1,000 on what account? With risking one pip and two pips, you were able to make just $1,000? Perhaps you were trading on a $50 account. Because it's only when you're trading on a $50 account, that with that kind of risk to reward and a lot size, you can make $1,000 a week. Because if you're under normal circumstances trading a $500, even a, even a $200, per the result you claim to have cut, have been uh, to have caught right being a sound proposer or proponent of 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 uh smart money concept if you if you even had two hundred dollars in your account you should have closed at least five thousand dollars this week based on the risk to reward and then the kind of pips you are risking it's simple mathematics you don't need to be a magician to put this across he couldn't prove himself I was literally still just sorting different things out. And then to my best of knowing, this guy who's still on my live session, right, for whoever you may be, a screenshot was sent to me of him blowing somebody's, a poor guy's $700. He took the money that's going to trade smart money concept, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he blew the money and blocked the guy on WhatsApp and different platforms. That's why he doesn't show, that's why he doesn't put his face on his display picture because, because he is what he knows to be, himself to be. Running on people's social media, claiming what they cannot do. Taking poor people's money and then just risking the hell out of it because they can be able to draw on trading view and then put some stupid ass shit there and say, I raised two pips and I made a hundred dollars. This is a sound advice to everybody out here. I can show you guys a screenshot if you want from my other phone, which is always with me. This guy literally blew somebody's money. You understand me? A poor guy's $700. He says he's going to trade smart money way whatever whatever we <laughs> and literally lost the guy's money i'm not saying right point of correction i'm not saying that such concepts are not reasonable to pursue or perhaps seek to refine your trading to achieve such degree of accuracy or ingenuity right but again i'm also not saying that do not preach it as the holy grail 
or what is the order of the day or the whatever 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 it is all right because all these concepts is somebody who literally sat down to put words together and formulate these things and say yes this is the way things are done right if you really look into even the wyckoff schematics you guys do not understand that richard wyckoff was a ceo of a brokerage firm and because he was a ceo of a brokerage firm he had privy or privilege information or knowledge to the way big institutions used to run orders through his brokerage firm because of that he had first-hand information of being able to track down price behaviors before the market moved in favor of the big institutions because Wyckoff had first-hand knowledge because he was the CEO of a brokerage firm a big brokerage firm not a small one he had first-hand knowledge of the orders that ran through his brokerage firm from big players and then the price behaviors before the takeoff and that is what he used to formulate the schematics so it doesn't mean that every of the big players came together to say that yes at the same time it only means that well, you can only watch those traces as a basis of perhaps what the market is likely going to do in favor of big corporations right it doesn't also mean that the moment the market does that then that means that there is smart money behind it or whatever it is chat patterns always do randomly okay on the market doesn't mean that every chat pattern that okay will literally see that as big corporations move in the market it's human behavior chat patterns represent human behavior it's human beings that trade this market so if a and b equals c every time human beings see a and b they're going to react in the proposition of c anyway still nobody held this public challenge and it's almost 10. i'm gonna end this live session pretty soon because the basic nugget basic fact nobody could prove it otherwise yet in this big live session of over 300 people close to 300 people where are the smart money guys none could just save their converts right no none could literally save the convert the somebody know they play 100 percent you for know how to read work off it'd be a little tricky the advantage of is that you could take 10 trades and lose seven and win three still beat 30 percent of the trade what difference does it make when when you're taking 10 trades losing seven and then win three and i was taking 10 trades and literally winning all the 10 or taking uh 10 trades and losing two and then winning eight we need more youtube videos it's gonna come right it's gonna come money good see how could you come bro i don't need to be agitated out here we don't do smart money yet we are long term trading <laughs> anyway still counting on people to save their converts and then nobody out here so with that guy what's his name again who was forex beast who's still watching my live now who's now run into the dark his name is forex beast who has run literally run into the dark because for lack of better words i unfortunately expose his ass of blowing somebody's 700 dollar account <laughs> I didn't mean to expose your ass dude bro but you gotta be true to yourself as i always say on my live sessions and then don't claim to be what you are not yet this guy literally says that he has a lot of knowledge than me i mean I, we are not in a classroom where i'm gonna say yeah i'm the one that's supposed to be first every day because we are in a classroom environment and i know more than anybody but uh your six month can never beat my eight years experience in the market 
how many how many market behaviors have you seen or market um table lenses have you seen you understand what i mean from 2012 to 2021 you know the number of things that have happened on this market and how we have sought to position ourselves just to stay relevant and profitable in this market right back in the days where the pound was just literally dropping and dropping and dropping right do you even realize right have you ever been in a trading course trading condition where throughout the year the only thing that currency pair is doing is selling off right if you're using smart money blah 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 that thing is not retracing to go and hit your other block or whatever it is how are you going to position yourself in such market conditions because all that market does is sell off today sell off tomorrow sell off the next day sell off and literally have some minor pullback and then continue for a whole fucking year if you think i'm telling lies i can flip my chart and show you right Perhaps some people want to see more evidence. For a whole year. This is it. I'm going to take everything off from here. This is Euro USD from the year 2014 to 2015, one year of sell off. 2014, 2015, were you even in the market in the first place? Ask yourself that. What have you seen? What market condition have you seen? 2014, which is here, to 2015, can you trade a market that has just one directional bias? which is a sell. How are you going to apply your other block? Market retreats, hit this point, calm down, imbalance, blah, 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 bullshit. That's what I mean that before you can boast of experience in the market, you should have experienced different market conditions, right? And the market conditions change over time. For somebody that was using a momentum strategy, <coughs> which was literally catching the market movement, on any particular direction consistently would have been extremely profitable in this kind of position or market market condition and for somebody who literally catches market tops and bottoms would literally be waiting for reversal 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 before he realized the year has ended so it varies it varies right And then there are so many things that you want to learn on this market. When I was in, when I was in, when I was in Nigeria, right? When I was in Lagos, when I was in Lagos, who's here that, that was in the Lagos session? Who's here that was in the Lagos? Who's on this live session that was in the Lagos session? Right? Who's on this live session? That was, <laughs> right? So on the Lagos, on the Lagos session, right, on the Lagos session, I showed them one currency pair that I said that I can bet on probably my whole career in trading. <laughs> I can bet on my whole career in trading that nobody has perhaps um mistakenly even come across that currency pair so i did a little test i opened that currency pair and i said just guess what currency pair it, 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 it could likely be people gave various examples nobody came across it and then i literally put it out and i showed them a little psychology behind how these market moves right and what was the reason behind that just to show you that 
there are various reasons how things happen in the market than just subscribing to one school of thought and thinking that that is the end of the road. You understand me? And then people come across certain things, one school of thought, and then they think that that is the end of the road. But there are various school of thought around these markets that literally can blow your mind. You understand me? Imagine what are what are your smart money people gonna call here or blah blah blah. Everybody's concepts make sense in this market. I may do a thorough public breakdown of this currency pair and show you how big institutions interpret this market movements happening here than rather associating it whatever concept somebody may be in quote branding it to you, right? Kujo is a good trader, but you don't need to trust. No. Do you really not listen to exactly what I'm saying? Perhaps that I'm saying that I'm not saying that it is not literally to say that less bullshit smart money concept or whatever it is. It is, I mean, appealing to know that, yeah, we can minimize our risk or exposure on the market and make more profit. But at the same time, that is not the ultimate or, or perhaps the holy grail that is going to change anything for you in your life as a trader. But if you subscribe to that concept and you can prove your consistency to it, why not? But nonetheless, do not lie to yourself that that is how the banks trade <coughs> and they are that bullshit that gets associated with it. That's what i just said anyway it's 10 and i thank you guys for joining this live session i hope as usual it was informative and then educative for you guys unfortunately i saw so many comments coming in and then uh, for focus i wasn't able to even read 10 percent of the comments you guys left here but how i wish how i wish that i would have been able to read everybody everybody's comment and perhaps address it because you may have been saying something A lot of you are saying I should save this live. Kind of reading, kind of skimming through most of <laughs> that is the money supply, not that blocks. Anyway, basic, basic, basic submissions. Nothing really. Nothing really intriguing out here.
the bot is still under construction. We had a little glitch, so we put a hold on it for anybody asking. That's why I, I just put, you know, that when I want to put something out, it has to be perfect. So still more work's being done on it. Anyway, thanks for joining this live session. I'll catch up with you guys in subsequent sessions. Stay safe and then protect your psychology on the market.